flip side is true, right? They're still looking for that first win chance, uh, and this is probably going to be, would you say, their best chance of getting that first win? Well, after yesterday, when Unilad beats FaZe, it's a little bit tougher to call, but yeah, more than likely, at least that was the expectation as of two days ago, right? right. So right. it's like these guys, EG, and then maybe now even like E United, let's say that uh, Epsilon is going to need a win. They're going to need some sort of confidence, because if they don't score a single win throughout like the entire division, like how do you bounce back to play at the open events, to play in the next like set of two weeks? So they desperately need some Something just to get on the board if they do it here against another European team that they've probably at least had a little bit of scrim time against. That could be huge uh, just for positivity's sake, right? Because like we've seen in the past, this team not exactly happy uh, with their standards. They're very accepting and knowledgeable about their place so far in the league. So got to start turning things around. April is coming pretty fast. And, and I just think too, when you look at this division, right? Like I think Epsilon sort of blow everyone on a tier just under them. But there is a good amount of teams just right in the middle. When you talk about FaZe, Unilad, EG, E United, potentially even Splice. Now, really, the only two arguments you can make is Envy and Luminosity or, or uh, just a step ahead right now. But that middle of the pack, those five or six teams, they're just fighting for it. So, uh, again, Unilad, they want to make a statement. But if you're Epson, you'd be great uh, to get a W here. Most definitely would. Of course, first game of the day here. Battle of Europe. We've got ourselves Unilad versus Epsilon in what is going to be an absolute nail biter a must win for both teams if they want to have a good chance of making it to the stage one playoffs day two of course of week two division b kicks off right now ladies and gentlemen welcome to the cwl pro league presented by the playstation 4 we have the best call of duty teams from around the world competing and we are so excited to get it underway It is time for our first match, Epsilon versus Unilad. You know, we, we feared yesterday this would be a battle of two teams looking for their first victory, but Unilad able to clutch up yesterday in the match against FaZe. They've now got that one win. They're making things more interesting. I, can Epsilon shake things up even more today? Yeah, and I actually had a great uh, chat with Scraps and Muskins earlier. Uh, that's tough to believe. They do form pretty good sentences when you actually uh, get into an intense conversation, but no. Uh, they were shooting bots for a long time leading into today. We they know 1100 today yeah, yeah. Oh, they know the opportunity they have at hand, right? He was talking about how they start the week great with their win yesterday. They've got two matches today, I believe Epsilon and then EG, and then tomorrow they face E United. They have one thing in their mind right now, and that's a perfect 4-0 week. They're already 1-0. Very winnable match here. Absolutely could see them maybe taking the series off EG if they play to their best standard and we know this United team has been struggling There's an opportunity here for Ep uh, for Unilad to make some moves. Yeah, it's like the same for Epsilon, right? Like they can come in here win this the Unilad, uh, Uni United is look very vulnerable I think a great chance for both these teams a 2-0 day would be massive for either obviously, but we're getting ready to get it started and uh, the other storyline I mean the big one for me today as well just not talking about kind of the, the team struggling in the bottom four but in the top four of LG and Envy can both get their victories today against Splice and FaZe. They're going to be sitting at 6-0 and for a primetime matchup tomorrow to see who's undefeated through our first cycle here. That would be just the most absurd situation to That'd find ourselves in. But let's get it started. Unilad versus Epsilon, a battle of the two European squads here in Division B. It is day two. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm single and alone. So I will go ahead and... Get that thought out of my head by casting Call of Duty. And that's not changing anytime soon. It's definitely not. <laughs> Shots a little bit high from Dave there. Aki <laughs> able to pick up the kill. Set up on statue. One player from Unilad. Shots a little bit off for Aki as well. Shaky gunfights early for the side of Epsilon. But Nathan has been able to pick up a kill. Trying to spot one at top statue all the time so far going to Unilad. But Epsilon still controlling the spawns at least for our next hard point. But a lot of time till we get there. This is always where we see Hockey excel. It seems on this map, it's his top middle hard point. Does start this game at a three and two score line. Dave just trading effectively towards middle map. Epsilon now with their first seconds on the board, but again, Unilad are the ones that have to push on through and fight for these new spawns. And with only 18 seconds left, that's gotta be their top priority. You see one player spawn out from Epsilon, but great job all the way in the back by Dave to just stay alive and cut down Shawnee as he rotates over. Yeah, Dave and Vortex comboed well there to win kind of a bit of a two on two there to get control. 
Got a couple kills in a row for Dave and Vortex. Gonna be Vortex now looking for the push through Cole. And look what Dave just did. He clears out the front hardpoint push and then rotates all the way to lower docks where he kind of expects the players to push next. Gets the kill there too. Now though, it's a four man hit towards the front for Unilad. Nathan realizing the pressure here as he snaps on a two. Make it three. Nathan holding the front door lights as his and it's all four from Nathan. Good luck Unilad pushing down that lane. Fantastic stuff for him. It was Vortex that kind of made all three focus on him. Weakened some, slowed him down, and then Nathan shut the door, not allowing any pressure through the back. Now Epsilon has taken the lead. It'll be Dave's responsibility in the back. The rest of his teammates have dropped, but he's doing a good job to at least pick up a couple of kills here. Maybe he can get him out of the hard point and get this scrap time because his teammate's going to start rotating over. One actually pops up on him, so that they should be at least able to get these final 15 seconds. It might actually come down to, oh, there's going to be another gunfight there. Yep, the, it will go to Unilad, and actually Unilad has a number advantage at the new rotation. You've got Scraps and Shawnee here right now. Scraps currently at three and six, the slowest start of anyone on the team, ironically enough, after coming over to us and say, he's, he's bragging about, when does he ever do bad, yada, yada, all this stuff. He's shot 1,100 bots, he's ready to go, and having some uh, a rough start to this map. He'll get it going, though. He will. Yeah, he has had uh, very few poor maps throughout the course of this, despite the fact that the team has been struggling. He dips out, dips back into the hard point, weakens one, but not able to finish it. Epsilon now in control with 40 seconds remaining here in the docks warehouse. We'll see if Moose and company can begin to collapse. They're not going to be able to develop a pinch as the bottom spawn still controlled there by Epsilon. They've got two members inside the hard point as well. But here we go. Moose tries to get in, finishes one, but traded out pretty much immediately. The trades go the way of Unilad, though. All four drop for Epsilon. But look at Hockey here. You do have a couple of streaks in his back pocket. He most certainly does. Rotation currently in favor of Unilad with those spawns. Hockey, who did this yesterday in this exact map and game mode combination, focusing towards this underground and back garage area. He's slowly inching on up Wuskin. Great attention to detail here as he comes on over, cleans him on up, and there's the second two. He knows the pressure has to come towards this backside as they haven't seen anyone coming from top middle. He gets the help from his brother, and just like that, it's a near flawless rotation for Unilad. Yep, and just talking about Scraps' little start, he's now picked it up. Three kills in a row for him. Shawnee as well. Maybe they'll get some streaks here to combine, the, uh, combat the couple that you saw come in for Epsilon. Shawnee, man. Think about it. Joe called it out his need to pick it up in that, uh, what, fourth hard point yesterday in their series, and he went off, man. If Shawnee's going to play like that, this is going to be a team to reckon with, buddy. Most certainly are. And Unilad knows it. They, they, they are, trust me, they, they know the opportunity they have at hand right now. They would be our equivalent of, you know, the, the likes of maybe Mind Freak from Division A, where we say, what a week two change, change up and turn around they had. This is their chance to do it. A near perfect hold there on Winery as we will we'll rotate towards the new hill. And you see the scraps, or sorry, you see the streaks earned by Shawnee. Waskin's close too, though. And Waskin, yeah, he's one kill off the fighter pilot as well. See if they can pick up a couple sets of streaks here. It was a really good stretch of two hard points there between Docs, and then also rotating into Beer. They picked up a lot of time. Just peppering the crane, but not going to be able to hit Dave at all. So Shawnee connects with nothing. That angle provides just nothing whatsoever there from the fighter pilot. But Wuskin still is inching towards these streaks. And you can see just how slowly he's playing this. One, he needs help from his team anyway to flood forward. There he does earn two streaks. He's kept Dave pinned behind that pillar. Let's let Shawnee push on up. Wuskin, great job at least playing his life for that long. Let his teammates flood on through, and now it's Unilad back in control. Yep, it's like every time Epsilon puts some points on the board and starts to climb back in, Unilad takes over and pushes the lead out once more. They're looking to pick up the rest of this time. There is one player looking to hit the scrap. It got Nathan that was trying to make a play in here and disrupt a little bit. But yep. as of now, he hasn't been able to do it. Moose is here to help inside a fire, do an excellent job. Dave actually picks him up from Docs. So they get him out of the hard point for the final eight or so seconds, but Moose inside of fire, he's snapping out, working on a little bit of a streak of his own. And what I will say is when this game was close, when it was Epsilon with a, a slight edge in the score, the slaying was dead even. But now it's every single player positive. Scraps actually just dropped to even on the side of Unilad, and the score reflects that. They've won the last three rotations. You see again here just how powerful Wuskin has been at lower docks with this AR. 18 and 10 the start from him. He doesn't have to worry about the hard point when he's the lone AR on this team. That's why he's only got 14 seconds in the hill. Most of Epsilon's time came on the second hard point in the first rotation. We're going to get there shortly. We'll see if that's where they can make the difference. They're spawning out lower side. They're going to have to wrap around and pick up the spawns on the right side of the map. Hockey doing what he can inside a fire to find kills. He's able to put Moose down. He's laying prone, but he's still racking up time. No one able to contest. And that's a good chunk of time there. It's statue for Unilad. Yep. And not only is it a good chunk of time, 
I believe this. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I believe the player that just got killed will spawn out. So Unilad have a timing window. They've got to hit this quick. Dave trying to watch the outside lane. He's giving away his position. You see the, the arrow pinching. That's going to be Nathan, I believe. Yeah, he just he, he just tried to make a play happen. Doesn't wind up working out. One player in the hard point is Shawnee. Smart play from him to just get on out of the hill. Play his life for as long as possible. Fight for these back spawns the rest of his team. Yeah, this is getting ugly for Epsilon now. Lead up to 100 for Unilad. Whoa. This one hard point where they were able to make some noise through the first set. The only one they actually probably had the edge on time. They're now not able to turn it into anything. The favorite spawns now to Unilad. Over 30 seconds to go here. They continue to rack up time. As uh, you know, Dave and company are trying to push through the front, they're finally able to get in. They have kind of a three-on-two, four-on-two situation here. So they can at least pick up some seconds. And the big thing, too, is Unilad are seeing more and more success on these hills as they hold a larger majority of the time. Like, they're up by 100. They can afford to give up these 15 seconds of scrap and rotate to new. They don't have to worry about a bunch of streaks coming on in. They're, they're, they're just shooting better flat out. They're just absolutely shooting better than Epsilon right now. It's why they're outslaying by 15-plus kills. And honestly, they, they, they've been coasting since that second hill of this game, Maven. Yeah. I mean, they haven't blown up in too big of a lead, but nope. they, it's always been comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> You've never really felt like Epsilon uh, was going to take over or was ex exactly in striking distance. They haven't been able to claw back in and make it at least a close game. But Moose now in the corner can't win it. Hockey wins the 1v1, and that's going to be some time inside there for Epsilon. But two men about to hit this then from Unilad. Both getting dropped, though. Dave and Hockey combined to wipe out everyone, and maybe this is where the comeback happens. You get these 30 points, you're only trailing by 30, and that, that close game they haven't been able to push to suddenly becomes alive. Oh, yeah, and there's more streaks being earned right now on the side of Epsilon. What I will say is I don't think Unilad were expecting this pinch. There was a player who had spawned out near that back beer area who shot two players in the back. I think it was Dave. As they went to retake, he got one week, which gave the kill to Hockey for the streaks. 22 and 19 now. Look at the difference in slaying. Two players now positive on Epsilon. The score from 100 plus seconds now down to just 50. And Hockey by going on a seven streak there, able to pick up some streaks, but it's going to be Unilad still inside. I wonder if he's going to invest any here to try and bust on through. There's still a ton of time. Here we go. So Hockey is going to call in the glide bomb. Picks off one there as he's watching Perfect. the lower dock push. They clear up everything. They see the spawn then coming up B Street as well. Allow Nathan to get in position. This is all this time is going to go to them. All of it. They might have to rotate somebody, rotate somebody in because of the glide bomb. But oh. I thought they were going to be. Good. Everybody got all oh, those two different glide bombs. Let's say I was like, how did they break that so quickly? Well, you invest two different streaks there. But also, the person who was watching it outside, Cole thought the person who overextended went through underground. He never did. He actually, it was Shawnee calling in the streak. So Shawnee gets out of his streak, and next thing you know, he's got Nathan sprinting right in front of him, a free kill as they push on through. You thought this was the hill where Epsilon come back into the game and really maybe bring it down to about a 30-second difference. Oh. Instead, it's still a one-minute lead for Unilad. And that's the power of streaks. If you looked at the minimap, I, mean, I was like, you thought the final 30 seconds were going to Epsilon for yep. sure, but not the case behind the glide bombs. But Dave and company starting to get loud. Dave almost turns and burns the third, but not able to finish it. But Hockey knows he's weak. He's trying to chase him down. Just saw him drop. Should have seen a couple of bullets, and there he's able to finish it up. I love how far pushed up they are. Look at where they have players. They just had one inside that mid gate. You've got Hockey at the opposite side of lower docks. They'll just spawn up and back and be able to immediately assist the hard point. Finally, a streak called in from the side of Unilad to try to relieve some of this pressure. They get one, but still spawns in favor of Epsilon. They They're going to be able to flood this hard point quicker. And Maven with 25 seconds left and a fighter pilot of their own. If this time goes to Epsilon, the lead's going to be down to just 10 seconds. They're right back in this. If it wasn't for the streaks from Unilad, it'd be an Epsilon lead right now. They did get them out of the hard point for a little bit of time, but like you said, the spawns are going to be the difference. Final 10 points going to be going towards them. Going to be trailing by wow. a little over 20 points as Moose is able to bust through with a couple of kills. Aki still has a mortar to work with, but that's going to be it for him. Checking through the rest of Epsilon. No other streaks to work with outside of that mortar. Second rotation totally goes in favor of Epsilon in this game. Now we enter the third rotation. Mortar's coming on in. It does not kill Shawnee in the hill. Hockey takes matters into his own hands there. From the sky camera, you see the pressure coming towards the top side of the map from Unilad. But all the gunfights are won by Scraps and Moose. They're back in the hill. They're now within 36 seconds of winning this game one. Finally, okay. 
it's hard to catch off, but this is the best opportunity you have had at getting spawns for the second hill in the rotation. They know they cannot win off this hard point. They know Epsilon will not be able to win off of literally getting every second on this hill and almost every second on the next. So as long as they just focus on rotating here, get yourself close to that 250, even if you have to rotate once more to lower docks. As long as they play good hard point fundamentals, they should win the map. They should. And again, all you have is the mortar from Epsilon. We'll see if that can be a difference maker. But on the bottom of the map, it's going to be two players still set up here from Mutilat to control the bottom spawns. They get a bit of a split in underground as well. One person, though, still holding strong inside the hard point. That's going to be Nathan doing the best he can. But he's going to get flooded here soon. There's one flanking through fire. That flanker actually could have proved crucial. That's going to be Vortex trying to come in. He does get one. He's going to turn a couple of the heads here. They might be able to work with Nathan to make the play. What looked to be so good for Unilad fell apart for a moment. But finally, they're able to track down those kills. Is this where the mortar gets invested? Uh, at some point, you, you think he kind of has to. 2.32 to 1.94. The clock is ticking. Unilad's watching everything. One more kill for Moose. And now they've just got to begin to flood right through this main gate. They have no other option. It's pure desperation. Every gun from Unilad focused here. GG. Unilad win the first map, 250 to 194. And they were getting real loud there. I think it was Scraps we heard scream at the top of his lungs. Both teams. Really getting into it at big play after big play, but Unilad doing just enough. My God, though, this play from Nathan, though, where he uh, cut down the entire side of Unilad was pretty sick. You kind of see there was one last ditch effort going for those spawns. Moose winning that 1v1 at that back box and forcing all four. They had full peace of mind that all four players spawned out at lower docks. They knew, hey, Everyone turned towards gate. They cannot fight for spawns. They literally have to just run right through. Every nade went there. They were pre-firing it. There's no chance when there's that little time. They played hard point fundamentals at the end of the map. They won the game, and just like that, it's it's a Unilad team that continues to look good in week two. Yeah, and uh, to be fair, I mean, Epsilon did turn it on and do a second gear, what seemed like over the final couple minutes of the game, but they were trailing by as much as 100 throughout the course yep. of it. It just wasn't enough late down the stretch to actually get the W when it became desperation time, like you said. But uh, search is where this will be interesting. Uh, Unilad's a team that we saw take two searches off a of phase yesterday. They look yep. very calm, posed, collected. Uh, it was impressive effort from them. So you got to think, after that game one, Game two certainly going to be a very tough matchup for Epsilon. Uh, not that they've looked uh, shockingly great in any map or mode combination, but uh, Search has me scared with how Unilad looked. Yeah, and especially on Arden Forest, we know we've seen from Epsilon some of these aggressive A hits with these smokes and flooding it on out. It's Nathan who typically plays on that side of the map. His job is to either get a first blood or get away with his life and retake the site with the rest of his team. You know these guys have at least seen a bunch of gameplay from each other. There's been so much stuff going on here in the Pro League. These guys basically watch every single match up in the Pro Lounge as well. So we've seen enough hard and far search and destroy from both these teams that, honestly, you could throw you or I in there and probably call what strategies you're going to use based <laughs> off of what round. Yeah, and I just keep waiting with this Epsilon team. Like, I know... Obviously, Dave said in the interview that they're going to get better later in the year. It takes months, but they are getting more play on land right now than they've ever gotten. Like, in a consistent time yeah. against top teams like than they've ever experienced. Like, much more than last year in the Pro League. Uh, much more than any time in their career. So, I'm just, I keep wondering, like, are they just going to drastically improve? Like, you know, you said some of the other teams did in Division A. Uh, get to see I'm it, not, though. Get to I'm see not it. sold yet. I'm not sold yet. They obviously have a ton they need to improve upon. Here's the map breakdown, though. Arden Far Search and Destroy will be up next. Game three, capture the flag on Flak Tower. And if we need game four and five, we'll head to St. Marie back to back. I want to see Scrap Snipe. That's all I want in this game, too. It's certainly a map where you can make a difference. Epsilon, I've been on the receiving end of some snipes here. It's a Tommy hit the collateral against them the other day. Almost, a, almost lined up a triple collateral on him. It's so little, this will be interesting. You got to say it's favoring Unilad, though, pretty heavily here. Most certainly is. As we get into it, we'll go ahead and go through both sides, see who has a sniper. Anyone bringing them out from the side of Epsilon? So far, they typically haven't favored having it. Nathan does like to run that AR near A. Scraps would be the one for Unilad to be running it, but no sign there. They Expect went, an aggressive push. I think they have three people. Yeah, yeah they're hitting it. They are definitely hitting something. I, th I believe it was just one AR we saw. Moose is going to be the one stunning over the top. Will connect. 
slows down the push, and that's Hockey. He caught a stun to the face, and it made an easy kill there for Wuskin. Instant plant from Unilad. Perfect push through. This is what we talked about the other day. Like, Scraps was the one responsible for throwing that stun over and wasn't doing it correctly. So that play they just made <laughs> was problematic for quite some time. Now you can see uh, as Moose takes over duties, they're able to get in. Still, though, number advantage to Unilad. Bomb clock ticking down at this point. These rounds become near impossible to win. As you've got all the cover you could ever need at Top Ruins, you've got an AR in Wuskin with the bomb planted for him basically across the map. Yeah, this, this one is done. There's no time left. Yeah. I mean, it was obvious what their plan was from the get-go. You saw three PPSHs. You knew they were going to fly. And it was an easy kill on a stun player, I believe, there inside of Ruins for Wuskin that opened things up. And as soon as they got control of the site, they didn't look back. And I believe that was completely, uh, that was a perfect round, right? I don't think yep. a single player dropped. They get all four kills. Quick plant. Flawless stuff from Unilad. You could literally just tell by their class setup. They were doing something aggressive oh, yeah, right yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, no question. Maybe taking a page out of LG's Arden Forest search and destroy playbook. As it's now Epsilon on offense after suffering the first blood, what can they do? As they begin to flood on through. Stun. I don't think it hit anyone, but that nade surely did. So that'll back up the players for a brief moment. Nathan, we see out here. Fire truck. Trying to get vision. Scraps on Unilad set up there at top ruins. Has to back down from a nade. They weren't able to force their way in like we saw Unilad do in the previous round. Dave peaks. And just that, that you saw that screen shake for Scraps with the nades coming in. He gets obliterated before he even seems he has time to react. Those were just like kind of chipping away at his health. They were so far away. And it got him to a point where he was just one bullet. You know, a near flawless round for Unilad. It's basically now a near flawless round for Epsilon as they're on the verge of tying it up one to one. Yeah. If you take out, uh, take out Wuskin here, nobody on defense will be able to pick up a kill yet. And I think a lot of it just simply comes down to both of these teams start up this map playing how you think every team will play, right? It's the most basic stuff. Send a guy top ruins. Send a guy towards mid U. Send a guy to the front green truck. Send a guy to the A wall. Well, what do you do when you're on offense and try to push into B? You double or triple nade that guy off the power position. You time it out where you have someone sprint to pillar and look for a first blood. And basically, both of them just went with the most standard play you could on this map. Don't expect that to remain the same yeah, through the rest look, of this game. Here, you can see a little bit difference in the pushes, though. Theirs at least got slowed down, so they had to isolate that guy top. They weren't able to just fly in and get the opening pick. But both teams executing very well on offense. Look at that deep stun. Finally, the players will sprint on through. Shawnee's pushed up towards top ruins from the sky camera. Dave playing this off angle, and do they have any idea he's here? He's going to begin to shoot. And it looks like they won't. It's too little too late as two go down. Moose pushed right through during all of this. Yep. He just flew on in. He might have a chance to be the difference maker, and he's doing it right now. Gets one kick it away, one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be Wuskin versus Nathan. And Moose just flying through with the smoke and all the disruption there. Was able to make a play, and nice shots there, Wuskin. Winning the one versus one. Wow. And it's still all offensive victories here throughout the first three rounds. A brilliant play from Wuskin. Doesn't hesitate. You saw when he hit that first bullet in Nathan, he was watching that mid-ruins area, and when he dives across, that basically gives him the idea of, hey, he's got no intention of sprinting out at me. Let me reposition towards top ruins. Catches Nathan, getting a little bit too wide on the shoulder peak. And just like that, it's now 2-1 to one for Unilat. Yeah, that's the... That's the power of the FG. Sometimes if you feel you have a good shoulder peak, you're, yep. still, you're still getting evaporated. So last time, this is the exact same setup they had for the most part, except they had one person in that middle map area. Now they just give it up. There's four stacking towards B, but it's a first blood for scraps, and immediately Epsilon realized, hey, we just used a bunch of our utility. We're down a man. It's going to be a tough site to push towards. Could this be the first defensive round win? It's looking like it's scraps. Snap to snap. Oh, my. Some nice shots on the Unilad side there. All coming with the FG, but brilliant plays. And that will be the first defensive round. That's what's really going to separate these two teams early. Brilliant stuff from Scraps. Gets the first kill at the B-bomb. Pushes towards top ruins again. Chains together the other two. What I will commend Epsilon on right there is they don't get overly aggressive. The strength for defense on a map like Arden Forest is when there's not enough tacticals left and lethals to force you out of power positions. There's no need to give them up. You don't have to go and pinch them. They have to plant the bomb if they want to win the, win the round. They keep their player watching mid lane. They keep their player watching A from ca cabin cover. They've got trust in their teammates to hold off whatever push goes to B, and it pays off perfectly. Well, this time, Jack, it's going to be Unilad pushing several players up 
through mid map that's going to force vortex to back it up a bit and also call for the rotation for multiple players out of b so now you've got a lot of pressure well, a lot of defenders i should say kind of back mid still trying to wait on the plant to develop here and they're gonna have to work the retake but it will be a four on three so still very doable for epsilon but a very winnable round for unilad as well obviously from here on out if epsilon just trade effectively they win this round they haven't moved much yet i think they're looking for someone to make an overly aggressive play from the side of Unilad, but no one at all is making manu maneuvers. There's the first blood for Wuskin, now making it a three-on-three. Three. This round just become a lot more winnable, and especially with how little time there is, only 15 seconds now to make a move. If you're on the side of Epsilon, another 1v1 gunfight challenge, another 1v1 gunfight lost. Epsilon do not use their number advantage at all early in the round. They take a 1v1 gunfight over and over and over, and just like that, it's Unilad beginning to run away with this map, and these guys, Maven, keep getting louder and louder. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you changed there if you're Epsilon. Like, I understand the fact you want to hit it from, like, the three different angles, but as soon as Dave drives, dies in the flank, you lose your advantage there. You then, with the time on the clock, Wuskin knows nobody else is going to be hitting the flank with 20 seconds left, so he can focus back towards the A-bomb site, and he gets another kill. I don't know if he was trying to flood all four, four together and just trade, trade, trade. But, uh, I mean, if Dave wins that one-on-one -on -one against Wuskin on the flank, things go very, very differently. That's what it really came down to for me, if it's that, that first gunfight. Heading into round six, Unilad trying to move towards a 2-0 map advantage in this best of five. First blood again for Wuskin. Jeez. This man can do no wrong. He's seven and one. He got oh, a third. my goodness. He got a third in that. Can we get back to Wuskin, please? I just want to see. Can he get the ace? He knows where Dave is. This is for the ace. Tags him. Trying to finish him. Has him pinned in the corner for eight in a row. And for the oh. round six days, oh, Dave's like, nah, sorry, sorry, son. <laughs> I don't know how he even had enough bullets to get the third kill, but I guess that's the FG42 and the three-bullet kill range. Yeah, I mean, him. I was impressed with the first two. We, we went to check the streak, and somehow, by the time we got into the glide bomb, another player had already died. Unbelievable stuff. I mean, look at the look at the twins right now, 14 and four combined. They think about how good they've been in this. They're 14 and four, and we had apathy go start 14 and zero in a map like that. Like <laughs> how wild that is. Like yeah. 14 and zero. Like get the hell out of here. I haven't heard much more from it, but I I, I, I have never heard of a time when someone any, went any number like anyone that. Anyone that tweeted me uh, a couple like 11 and 0s, 12 and 0, and I think one tweeted me a karma 13 and 0 that I didn't check up on, but I, I believe 14 is the highest. That's just absurd. Yeah, there's no way. I just I just don't know when. It could have been beat. As we move forward, Unilad coasting right on through to this point here. As they are looking fantastic on day two. And this is where you're worried for Epsilon. I heard Joe talk about the desk, especially after the S&D wins against FaZe. You thought this is where they were going to be able to take control, and they're doing just that, pulling their way through. Full streaks for Scraps. So you had, what, an eighth streak for Wuskim, seven then for Scraps. They completely and utterly took over this game. Every time there was a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with an FG, they were winning it. Almost every single time. Look at this. They, they know he doesn't have Mountain, and Scraps is a fighter pilot. As long as they keep eyes on Bomb, the second he begins to push up, you should see Scraps just call on this streak. And Moose will get the call up. Moose should finish the kill. Wow. Unilat. Smoke Epsilon in game two to go up 2-0 in our best of five. All the analysts pick Unilat to win this one. I had Unilat in the series. I believe you did as well. And oh, yeah, right yeah. now, it looks like our predictions are coming true. This could be a very, very big day. Well, just a big, uh, big day and a half really with the, the match they had against FaZe and now going big here if they get two wins and if you're you if you're United you're probably thinking god thank god Epsilon didn't come out with the fire they, they're not dominating right now because uh, I am telling you right now <laughs> Unilad have recognized the opportunity they have to go with a four and a week and so far they have yet to drop the ball but the series is not done yet Epsilon will have another chance up next on Flak Tower, capture the flag. Game two was dominated by the Twins when we come back. More Call of Duty World League action.
Scraps has been dominating in this one. Unilad up two to zero. You know, I was seeing on Twitter, Scraps is trying to find a date for Valentine's Day, and it may hinge on this series for him. He's going. He's going hard right now. We're looking for the three out. Yeah, there are definitely, I'm sure, a lot of. A lot of women out there just looking at this and saying, wow, Scraps' this COD gameplay is just making me want to date with this single man. Um, no, it's an absolute lie. Uh, they, they, they're they watching this going, man, finally he's actually playing decent. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no I, I, jo I, I joked with him that uh, Moose carried him in the game five yesterday because he went off, if you remember, in that St. Marie. And, uh, of course, oh, 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 oh. that's basically that's how I interpret their, uh, their speech. But uh, it's good to see him doing well. Uh, on the other side of the stage, Epsilon, we know their struggles. They continue right now. But that, th those two on your screen, Scraps and Wuskin. Funny story I actually heard from them. They told me today, because I was joking with them about, you know, they obviously have their brothers. They live together at home with their parents. There was one I time know, at the dinner. The second part was obvious. They, 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 there was one time uh, at dinner where their mom made them chicken. Chicken cutlets, basically. Chicken okay. breasts. Okay. And she made them each two small, like, kind of little patties worth, right, that they each had. So Wuskin ate one of his, and Scraps had already eaten both of his. And Scraps pulled a $20 bill out of his wallet and offered him $20 or 20 whatever London bucks for the one chicken breast. <laughs> he was hungry, man. Wuskin didn't accept. He was uh, a hungry boy too. But that's great. I can't. I can't. I would love to just see like be a fly in the wall in that in that in that house. When any serious conversation needs to happen, no, needs it must to be, be incredible. Needs to be a live feed there at all times. But here we go into game three, seeing if Unilad can close it out or if Epsilon can bring this back. He'd have to start here on CTF, and already, I mean, just the opening couple of kills, and how I heard, I heard some screaming coming in. How has Nathan made it this far? Thankfully, Wuskin's there with the bar, but I'm actually surprised he even was able to get a flagpole. I kind of like this. I like the. I know how good the FG42 is right now, but you definitely have more medium-range type fights with ARs, and you might get caught in a close-range gunfight. And the bar is certainly going to be very, very powerful here. Oh, definitely. And right now, his job just watch. This outside lane as he's expecting everyone to flood forward from Epsilon. Nathan just kind of pushes out without a care in the world and pays the price because of it. Wuskin, it's a free kill there. Well, I think that the gunfight Wuskin got was an easy one with the bar. That that fight against an FG-42, at that Not range fun. is where it becomes a little bit more difficult. Again, look, a player snuck through, and it seems like Udalad are just kind of going for it and, and, and just hoping for the best. That's a team kill, and now the flag will be pulled. It's going to come down to a couple 1v1 gunfights to stop this run. Yeah, things are real shaky here. Team kill does not help, and that's an area of really worst thing that can happen. Vortex still going with it. One behind yeah, him, and Dave able to pick up the kill. Cap in early for so, so that, for me, is just a miscommunication from Unilad. The well, fact, twice now. Yeah, uh, it's, well, yeah, exactly. With the Nathan pull, and, and then that one you saw just come on through from Vortex. Vortex is 0-2 with a flag capture. He didn't have to do anything to, to run on through. He just kind of snuck by. They didn't count for him when they got three dead, and because of it, you know, they're down 0-1. And Dave, known for his prowess with an AR over the past couple of years, showing what he can do off the break with a sub. He starts out 6-2 and two in this one. All the kills recently at least seem to be going Epsilon's way. So they're taking control of this. Vortex able to hit the cross and still stay up. He wants to continue to try and play for these streaks. Only has one kill to his name, but the, the pull and the score with the flag is the big part of it, but not able to win it. And that's, that's not a gunfight you're very frequently going to win. Nope. <laughs> now, if they lose track of Nathan. Okay, uh, for a second, I thought all three were going to run across the map, yeah. but they know their teammate just died. No. It looks like this time they'll at least put okay. some attention towards you. That's Shawnee who will track back. Now Nathan's dead. Now they know everyone's... <laughs> at first, I saw all three oh, yeah, arrows no. start to go down. I was like, oh, God. Trust me, I, come I, on. I, I was thinking the same thing for a moment. <laughs> but halfway through side one so far, this map offensively has been all Epsilon. They've got the only flag pulls so far. Playing a little bit defense as well here. There, another range where the bar is going to be very, very good. That's just a tough gunfight. I don't care what gun you have. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's just at its core, a tough gunfight. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do clear their home base. And now they're starting to push forward. Hockey already in position. Two players just pop off spawn, but you're going to have three. And in a moment, a fourth from Epsilon here flooding in. You're like going to have to win a bunch of gunfights here to have a chance. They're doing just that. Hockey, though, still in a good position. The biggest part of all is that their fourth teammate just came off spawn. And Honestly, they're going to have one overextend right towards the base. Shawnee might have a chance for a flag pull here, especially if his teammates get a kill on the other side of the map. Yeah, they're not they're not expecting him here at all. Unfortunately, they're everywhere. Though. One teammate does die. He, so right now he's just waiting. He's waiting for his teammates to get in, get in fights near middle. Oh, that was bad timing for Moose and Wuskin. He's got to chill now. Yep. 
You gotta, he, he's gotta hope, he's gotta hope for scraps to go big. It's like the opposite of what you saw work out for Epsilon. They, they get gifted with a team kill and everything through their little sneak pool. Not what you see on this side, but they find a couple more kills here. If scraps can win this around the edge. He's Flag already gonna pull it though, yep. Shawnee already goes ahead and grabs it. Shawnee's pushing forward, tries to dive to Wood, not able to do it. They've Who's got a player here. Oh, Hawkey goes big though. Wuskin nearly chained together both. Look at how weak Hawkey is. Not able to get the two piece was Wuskin and that's the capture or the return, sorry, for the side of Epsilon. And another for Hawkey. Nice this, place. This is where he's thrived though. Those like close range kind of frantic gunfights where it seems he has to snap all over and that's where we've seen him just go, not, as I say that, <laughs> that one didn't work out quite as well. Nope. <laughs> Shawnee, Shawnee picks up two though. Now it's an all out of for Unilad. They want one cap for the half. There's the first entry they need. This second wave of kills. We've gotta get it going. Scraps can't chain together, but nice shots from Moose. He gets the third two. This is the best chance yet. He needs a little bit of help though. They're spawning up in the very back and he's one shot. Just a little bit of a timing, a pacing issue as Wuskin's just getting there in time to help. One was just further pushed up than the others, and just like that, it's Unilad trying to frantically go for a pull, but there's too much defense here. Epsilon will end side one with a one-cap advantage. Yeah, Wuskin got some real unfortunate, uh, fortunate timing there at that top turret. Like, as soon as he wrap back to try and pick it up, he's, the player snuck through and ended up killing one of his teammates on the push. Yep. So, yeah, I, just nothing... Uh, I, I don't know if sloppy is the correct word from Unilad, but uh, it, pacing issues for sure on offense. And uh, I guess you could say on defense, as far as uh, letting letting players sneak through the gaps. I mean, that's the reason you've got a store difference here. Well, and yeah, I guess you can say sloppy because not only did they let somebody sneak through, but also then had a team kill with a grenade. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be looking at zero to zero scoreline. Yeah. Oh, exactly that. Once again, a couple kills in the middle map in favor of Epsilon gives them the freedom to push on forward. As they just wait. Look to see if Unilad kind of sprint into their areas. They're pre-aiming. Like the decision. See, look, just like that. They'll take that every moment of the day. That'll let them push a little bit more forward. It's it, it's just like chess, Maven. It's you're pushing chess pieces forward, looking for positioning. As soon as Unilad seems to get a little bit of a clearance on their on their side of the base, they push out. And there's still two players. Reps on still at mid map, still trying to not let them just get out and apply any pressure at all. Nathan's still here. They're hunting for him, and they finally get the kill. Ooh. There they go. <laughs> finally, everybody dies from Epsilon. They're able to at least make a play. But as I say that, Dave's already gotten into a nice position where he gets two kills, and that thwarts any opportunity here from Unilad, at least over the next 10 seconds or so. This is really where Unilad have struggled so far this map, is just getting something going at this 50-yard line, getting this wave of kills to pin them in the base, you know, catch them Ooh. coming off spawn. Hockey, a disgusting two-piece there. As again, look what, look what they have to do. Moose has to wrap rack back. They have to kind of pre-aim and protect their base. Epsilon continually on the offensive this game. And they're coming again. Moose doing what he can. There are two more players here on that right side. Overextending is going to be Shawnee. Shawnee wants to try and make a play again. He was the one in position with their only touch, I believe, that had an opportunity to do so. But they know something's up. One had spawned out on that far right side, so they know someone's in position here. Shawnee trying to get in. He's been tagged up. He's been dropped. Nothing he could have done. He has no help to work with. As soon as he drops, now the rest of his team gets here. Even the fact that he gets Moose weak right there doesn't, like, you see what Moose has to, Moose has to fall back. He has to play his life. He, he's one shot. He can't throw his life away with the positioning. Again, this is the best chance you would you'd allowed have had in the last few minutes. But they just need this entry kill. And also, you want to maybe get Moose on these streaks. If he can pick those up, maybe that's what you can use to string something together. He's just sprinting. Oh. He's sprinting right into one. Not ideal at all. I think he just needed two more kills there to pick it up. At least they've got Epsilon trying to fight out of spawn for a moment. Oh, well. As I say that, Shawnee loses his gunfight. Now there's two flooding forward from Epsilon. Oh. That's Wuskin in the back with an AR, and Hawkey knows it. As he dips right away. They've got two players here. It's basically a 2v2 on either side of the map. 
And I think they're just kind of going with that with that breakdown. There's the first. They've got to get aggressive now near the Epsilon base. But look at the Epsilon players. They're both holding deep angles. There's one kill. There's two. Perfectly done by Dave and Vortex. Eight minutes of flawless defense so far for Epsilon. Yeah, Epsilon just hasn't made any little mistakes, right? At least on their their side of the map. No little mistakes. That not really allowed anyone to push through. I mean, Shawnee, I know, has gotten positioned a couple of times, but wasn't able to do anything behind it as the Epsilon defense still held. Nathan in a one-on-one -on -one here with Scraps. I say that, he gets help from Maki from mid-map. Now they're going to push together. Wuskin and Shawnee in the base trying to play a little bit of defense. I just don't know. I mean, you haven't seen anything out of Unilad that, that makes me think they're going to type this game. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And a lot of it comes down to where they've been getting their kills. A lot of them have been in their own base trying to play defense. One minute and 12 seconds left. The silver lining is all it takes is a few. It, it literally could take one wave of kills. You could have nine minutes of perfect CTF from Epsilon, but a four dead right here will give Unilad a cap because Epsilon don't have streaks. <laughs> but the problem is where, where Vortex is set up as well. Mid no, here's our best chance. That flank from Shawnee, three dead. But Vortex. Will they pick up the mid flank? But Vortex. Vortex is still here. Another 1v1, the two piece from Vortex. You saw it happen. You knew it was going to happen. He was in mid map, just waiting to flank when he needed to. Runs back, it's a perfect timing, and there goes that. Consistent plays on defense for Epsilon, and, and this has been a gripe we've seen from Unilad a lot of times in CTF. We've just watched him leave open holes, and he actually earns Two streaks off of that one. Wuskin trying desperately to get away. Not going to happen. 19 seconds left at this point. They're just overextending, looking for a chance to get in the base, to get a flag pull to force this extra time. You've got to go if you're Moose. You've got to go. Yeah, these are only hope right now. He's got eight seconds. He's got to move. Oh. Moose, three seconds. GG. What is he doing? Checking corners. Not ever <laughs> doing anything. He's going to drop an Epsilon. I mean, I, it was only a 1 0 score line, but. I guess in a way, it well, maybe didn't feel like more, but you just <laughs> you didn't have many opportunities until, I mean, really the only legit chance for uh, Scraps and company was in that final moment. Yep. That was about it. And they still had one player missing that they hadn't located. He was mid-map and Vortex able to come up with the big two kills. Granted, if Vortex doesn't get the second, maybe they still get away with that, but you had a streak to work with still from Epsilon. Here's a good thing if you're if you're Unilad, you can go back and watch that gameplay and see exactly where you messed up and gave them the opportunity in, in the first half. I will commend Epsilon, though. Fantastic base defense continually clutching up. It reminded me a lot of teams on Arden Forest that they'll be pinned in their base. You know, you, it's a little bit easier to hold your base on Arden because of just how, how sure. deep it is. But we'll see a, a player pinned in his base, and we're like, he's got to get these two kills, and he does. How many times there do we see two pieces from players on Epsilon to either stop offensive opportunities for Unilad or get flag returns? Most important one again at the end there with Vortex, but even there, it just showed that Nine minutes of great CTF from Epsilon could have been wiped out by one play. One three dead in their spawn. Really close to happening, but Unilad like, can't do it, and they can't get the sweep, so we will see a hard point here. Now, I don't know, maybe get a little Epsilon, uh, momentum for Epsilon. They try to bounce back in this series. If you're Unilad, you can't tilt. I'm sure it's one of those maps where, yes, like you said, they're going to look back and be like, God, oh, we could have won this game if it weren't for a couple maybe mental lapses there. The team kill cost them on that first score. Well, the only score. Yep. But we will head to St. Marie next. St. Marie final two maps, right? Absolutely. So on St. Marie, you, you know there's certain parts where submachine guns need to go big, ARs need to go big. It's actually one of the reasons why I love the map because there are there are plays and areas where you need every person on your team to excel. It's, it's a little bit different from London Docks, in my opinion, where you kind of see the three SMG setup, the aggression, the in-your-face stuff. It's like an SMG-dominated map. This one, there's more of a split. This one... You need your SMGs to win gunfights, you know, inside that bottom red, inside that winery hill. You need your ARs to hold those spawns and get gunfight wins over that field and the outside, you know, turret hill. It's it's fun to watch. And I know for this one in game four, Epsilon will have their hands full with Unilad, but they didn't get blown out in map one. It was just consistent outplay from Unilad. If they can change that up on a few hills here, I see Epsilon forcing the game five. And I want to hear the energy going again for Unilad. I know, I know that CTF can take that away from a team in a way it's not like hard point right where there's a lot of kills where you're flying around where you're getting hyped the game slows down dramatically with ctf you need to see that energy come back from unilad and if you're epsilon just ride the momentum you just got that victory you know how big today can be if you can string together two wins here one over unilad one over e united and you think if you could beat unilad right now united look very very vulnerable
Oh, absolutely. Maybe uh, an Epsilon upset incoming. But I, I feel like that. I don't know. Part of me thinks like if they win this series, it's possible. If they don't win this series, it's not possible. For whatever reason, that's just how I feel about it. Here we go. Game four. Can Epsilon keep the reverse sweet dreams alive? Or will Unilad shut the door here with another great hard point victory? Swapping through players. Seeing the breakdown. No surprise here. Stuns being used as they are wildly popular. I like this stun spot. Hits the players right at the front door. Unfortunately, they can't chain any kills off of it yet. There you go. He'll take matters into his own hands. Nice shots. Nathan, gonna have a third. <laughs> well, his teammate will pick it up. Oh, well, actually might find a third in the end. If he can gun Moose, connects with the hip fire there. And a nice start there from Nathan. Already 325 points to his name. We'll see if he can keep it going as he's gotten into a nice position here on stairs. <laughs> Nathan's like, guys, can I get some sort of help? <laughs> Basically won the break for us. Well, even if they don't get some points, some streaks here would be the big thing. Is he going to reflank this again? It looks like it. He better hope his teammates don't drop, though, and he gets kind of wonky spawn. Yep, there it is. Look at Dave. Drop all the way at the bottom of the map. That's because of this flank here. Will it end up hurting him? I, it might. Nice snap onto one. We'll earn two streaks. That's big, though, yeah. And they're spawning everywhere. You've, yeah. got, you've got Wuskin spawning at the outside lot hill. You've got one player spawning back barn. That's, that's where it's tricky. It's like, do you want to flank there and get a couple easy kills and make sure you get the streaks, or do you want to wrap back with your team and make sure you get the safe spawns? I, I mean, I, I don't want to... I don't know. If he hasn't flanked there, you're probably fine for spawns. If you're all four spawning top, Ooh. now you've lost it entirely, Jack. And now Scraft has earned himself an artillery, too, which is a perfect streak to have for the hill after this one as players try to flood through from that outside courtyard area. A near-perfect start for Unilad. 50-5 to five off the break. Finally, Epsilon get an entry kill to go for a retake. But as I say that, it's two chained together. Three now for Unilad. Make it all four. <sighs> Moose on a six streak now as well. So after how this hard point went, were the streaks worth it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I'd be curious to hear the analysis break it down, but I mean, going for that late flank and getting the streaks, it, it, it cost your team a full minute. Yep. 75 to 5. Fighter pilot coming on through. You should see Shawnee just full sprint. He should not stop when pushing through this back barn area. To be fair, though, it is kind of hard to blame Nathan for everything when Dave's 1-7 and, and Vortex is 0-6. Yeah. Like, oh. Hell, it's funny. It's Wuskin, <laughs> Wuskin's 0-3. They haven't pushed the spawn. They haven't pushed for a spawn once this whole map so far. But Moose is lighted up, man. He's about to tack on his seventh in a row. He's 10-1. What a start from the mighty Moose. Needs a little bit more here if he's going to pick up the artillery. He's trying to fly forward. Should hey. catch one. Able to pick up gun so and... Oh, we had 50 a more. mighty moose. What would you call Tommy? Terrifying Tommy? No, Tommy the Terminator. Tommy dude. the Terminator. You just always come up with the two artilleries now earned. 105 to 5. Everybody seems like they're streaking right now on Utilad as well. That's 10 kills in a row for Moose. My goodness. What are we watching right now, Maven? <laughs> Epsilon. Talk about a team change. <laughs> they have, we're about to get into our final hard point here, the rotation. They've got five points. Five points. There's almost been as many hard points as they have seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one before. That's not good. That is fantastic. Here's another challenge now from Shawnee. Two kills for him. He's earned streaks. When it rains, it pours. And right now, the artillery. It's just raining down missiles from the sky. They've got every lane watched. They've won every rotation of hard points. Epsilon. They they can't get in. They still. can't get in the hill. That's this is this is why I love artillery. This is why I question why people even use mortars. Look at this. They they're having to go to oh, middle street, and you've got Shawnee on. with an AR. And how easy are these kills? Yeah. Those first two from that position. Ladies and gentlemen, they have not scored a point since the first five seconds uh, of this game. Jack, I was sort of kidding with my first point, but now we actually may be on our fifth hard point. We're entering five points. We are entering our fifth hill. They are on pace to score nine this game. <laughs> Rivaling just that of Aches when he was on pace to, to get three kills in yesterday's CTF at one point. We've had a couple players of that in CTF, but in hard point. There we go. Now they've, they've tacked on a couple oh. seconds here in restaurant. But that's why I think about it. entering the second rotation. You have the fifth hard point, you have five points. My God, this has been a dominating effort from Unilad. And like part of me thinks like, yeah, yeah, you had a slow start from several players from Epsilon, but you wonder if that, that first thing that went down with that spawn going into the second hard point, if that tilted the hell out of it. Like, think of that guy that popped, and he's just like, Nathan, what the hell are you doing there? Like, why am I spawning here? And then yeah. I wonder if the comms just go off the rails a little bit. I mean, 
there's an 18 kill or 19 kill difference already in this game. Yeah, I, I know. I, again, the one spawn can't account for the fact that Vortex is 3 and 15. Dave is 5 and 14. This is one of the most brutal maps I've ever watched. Momo watching on, remembering when he lost 250 to 6 in Hardpoint about five years ago. Here comes the glide bomb. Everyone revealed. Dave trying to get away in ammo. He will. But it's again Unilad who will be in the hard point first as we move to winery. And they still have a legion of streaks to work with here. Yeah, can we quickly just swap on through? See what they have to work with on the side of Unilad? Yeah, Unilad, please. Uh, a couple streaks there. Three okay, streaks. Three. three still to work with, and they're picking up all the time here. They're going to crack the 200 point mark here momentarily, unless. Well, that pick from Dave should make it a little bit easier to at least crack on in. There you go. Three kills string together. Epsilon in. <laughs> Looking to pick up some time. But just like that, another artillery. Oh, will it clear him out? Yes, it does. So I think that first artillery got them out of parking lot for, what, a good 15 seconds, it felt like, where they could have actually picked up time before they had to wrap mid. <laughs> now it's going to get two kills. I, I don't see why. I, I get why people use mortars to try to force people out of power positions, and it goes in quick. But I just don't understand why people keep mortars on over artillery, especially on a map like this. Oh, yeah. you, you can see exactly where you can drop down an artillery on every hill, uh, realistically, but the first. The second hard point, you drop it right at that entry, you know, archway area. The third hard point, as we move to parking lot, you drop it right at that, you know, front courtyard area, moving in from BS and D. And then on the final hill, outside of that, you know, outlook area, the outlook post, you can drop it on whichever side they're rushing you from. I just don't see how you use anything but, but artillery on this map. Epsilon are getting smoked. It's continuing here. Drop the artillery. They have another one, right? No, I think they to these both. Oh, they almost got another one there. All right, we've still got the deep spawn here. Both players spawn safe. Oh, no. Technically, technically oh, get in no. here. If you invest all your streaks, oh, it might just end no. the game. Three more for Moose. 229 to 41. <laughs> You've got Moose at 27 and 10. He's playing a pub. GG. I think Epsilon, yeah. Epsilon just dropped their controllers. This one's done, folks. Yeah, two people aren't moving. Three people aren't moving. That is a statement map from Unilad. Put the camera on them. They're popping off after that one. And it's for damn good reason. Unilad win the opening series 3-1. to one. Wow.